call this meeting to order at uh, 10 after 2. And uh, Councillor Thornton is going to give the invocation. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for that beautiful rain last night. We need it pretty bad. Uh, be with each and every council person here today and help them make the right decision for the nation and secure our nation the way it needs to be secured. And also be with our, <clears throat> our uh, we be with our troops overseas and, and the ones that come in harm's way, be with them and their families and, and uh, help them through hard times. Uh, in Jesus Christ's name, pray. Amen. 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 Ah. Roll call, please. Jim here. Bill Ingram? Here. Bill John Baker? Here. Jack Baker? Here. Julia Coates? Here. Jody Fishinghawk? Here. Don Garvin? Tina Glory Jordan? Present. Chuck Hoskin Jr? Here. Lee Keener? Hoffman. Dick Lay? Here. Curtis Snell? Here. David Thornton? Here. David Walking Street? Here. Kara Cowan? Here. Honey? We do it with Quorum. I got him. Um, next is uh, approval of the minutes. I make a motion to be approved. Second. Second. Approve all in favor? Aye. 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 Next is um, the Paramore Hospital and Mr. George Fowler. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <clears throat> uh, if, on your, your my report is in your packet. We were uh, picked up and uh, actually ahead on our collections on the. Uh, on the front, something that happened after I've turned this in. Uh, we have a new clinical director starting on uh, November 7th, uh, Dr. Charles Knife Chief. He's an OB-GYN from uh, there, there in Claremore, and I think he currently works uh, somewhere in Tulsa for uh, Blue Cross. He's going to be taking over duties as uh, medical director there at the hospital, replacing Dr. Mobley. Um, I'm working on doing on contracting the services of a uh, urologist half time, 20 hours a week. There in town, he is a uh, victim of the Hillcrest takeover of Claremore Regional. So uh, they were looking to uh, they, they, came, they approached us and asked if we would be willing to partner with them and keep the urology practice going. Um, in fact, I called Melissa and uh, asked if Cherokee Nation had a urologist because I didn't think we had enough patient load to uh, keep a, to justify 20 hours a week and Cherokee Nation uh, does not have a urology practice. So uh, Cherokee Nation would benefit from uh, this practice going up in Claremore. So that's that's also on the positive side. Um, there were a couple of questions last time on uh, uh, Mr. Baker, you asked uh, out of the 57, 5,600 denials last year and 2,748 of those were listed under Cherokee Nation. Um, on the contract health issue, the uh, GAO report, um, I had a couple of questions about it. There were some things that were kind of vague in that report. Um, namely, they, they were questioning oversight, and my question was, would be to them is, what kind of oversight are you looking for? And then they had a question about uh, the way we, we uh, report inaccuracies in the reporting of uh, deferred and denied cases. We, we, um, we report everything as a deferred or denied case that isn't funded. 
so I'm not sure what I'm not sure exactly what they didn't release the criteria they used but we report everything that isn't funded it comes through the contract health system um, so that, that, that those were my questions on on the GAO report Yes, Mr. Oscar. Thank you, Madam Chair. And, uh, does the, I mean, will the agency respond to the GAO report? Will there be some sort of a back and forth, or some sort of a response? Uh, it seems like the report was, I uh, sorry to catch up, was somewhat critical, of, not of Claremore per se, yeah. but just agency wide and even some tribal contact health programs. And I just wonder if there'll be some kind of rebuttal. I think from the agency, the agency. Um, Dr. Ribidoux has put together a contract health CHS task force work group or whatever it is she's titled it and uh, they're coming up pulling together some recommendations and going around and doing some surveys of different programs and trying to pull together uh, some best practices to try to improve the contract health system and as far as I know that is is going to be their response to that I haven't heard anything other than that Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Anyone else have questions, comments? Okay. Thank you for that good report. Thank you. Next up is Melissa Gower, Turkey Nation Health Services. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. I've submitted my report and I'll try to answer questions, but before that, um, I did, um, I've gotten just a couple questions about flu shots. So. I had one of our nurses to put together a list of places around and dates of when the flu shot's going to be offered. So I wanted to pass that around to everybody. Um, it's actually a two-page document, so there's quite a few places. And Madam Chair? Yes. Can you email that to us? Mm, probably. She just brought it to me, but I'll okay. see if she's got it by email. Thank you. And then the um, next thing I had is Councillor Hoskins had asked about the GAO report. And so I put together just a little summary sheet here. Um, if you'll take one of those and just pass it around. But um, George talked about it a little bit, and I agree with what he said. Um, just a point of note is that um, the GAO did come to Cherokee Nation and Contract Health, and we did interview with them and give them information about how we do our program. They were, um, and there is a CHS work group that Rubido has put together to. Um, look at best practices and we've um, also talked to them so and if there are any other questions I'll try to answer those yes. Thank you, I had a question about uh, I may get their title wrong it's the community is a community health representative you have some staff at the um, we do have a few okay. CHRs yes uh, CHRs okay so a question about the bigger uh, question the bigger part of it is public health nursing they're a part of public health nursing oh I see sometimes they're some of our clinics there we don't have CHRs they're called PHN assistants and that's why I hesitated because it's the public health nursing program I see um, I, I briefly attended a session of the I guess it's the CHR conference in Catuso mm -hmm. in the last month and there was some um, concern I guess I would say raised by one of the speakers about how not not necessarily Cherokee Nation although it did look like maybe we didn't report as much as other tribes but there's a reporting system that you're reporting to the federal government I guess it's to IHS and that keeps track of how many contacts the CHRs have and so I was wondering could you speak to what that system is how we collect that data and whether we send it to the federal government um, what I can tell, I probably can't answer all those questions right here, but what I can tell you is that that reporting system is a fairly new system, like within the last 12 months, and we have implemented it and we do report into it. Um, 
but I don't have a, I mean, I, I don't have a report in front of me or anything, but I'd be glad to answer, to get you any more specific data that you might want. Okay, and I might send you a follow-up because uh, I had some Okay, taken, do that and I'll be glad to I, I guess to the, the bottom line was, you know, to the extent Congress is funding Indian health care and they're looking at this data and that supposedly influences their decision making, although I think that there's a lot of other things that influences. So anyway, that was one concern I had, whether Indian country overall or particularly us are, are communicating this data to the federal government. We do, you know, they didn't have a mechanism for CHR previously, and so they have written this program, and it's a new reporting system that I know we just implemented like in the last 12 months, maybe. Okay. Um, but CHR, I'm trying to think if CHR is even a line item now in the appropriations budget. Um, we do submit all of our workload data, which is what drives funding, through the um, um, IHS um, database work site in Phoenix. They have a whole warehouse that does nothing but collect your workload data for Congress, and we do submit to that. I see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Yes. Uh, I'm going to refer back to the, the uh, day work program that Diane Kelly goes over. Um, I went to the uh, Hastings Hospital the other night, and uh, some of the, the staff there was concerned about ex felons uh, being employed, or yeah, being employed through the day work program at the uh, hospital. And when they request to get um, uh, just badges, I guess, for uh, uh, restricted areas for cleaning and whatnot. Uh, they, they're able to get into these rooms where there's files and records kept. And uh, when I spoke with Diane Kelly, she said they do a background checks. She said, but it's the it's on your part on far as the screening these individuals and, and be sure that they're uh, these can these these workers. Uh, are able to be around uh, elders and as well as children. Um, what have you guys communicated with each other on that, or like what's the like who's? I'm not saying who's at fault, but who's responsible uh, for for these background checks? Is it your part or is it her part? I'll have to find out. I'm not sure. Okay. I know that we have met, our staff have met with her staff and, and you know, worked out a process um, to ensure that um, appropriate background and HIPAA training, because they have to have HIPAA training before they're allowed to, before anyone's allowed to work in our facilities. And so I don't have that process lined out in front of me, but I can get that and get it to you. Oh, okay. Um. I think we all probably need to sit and have a meeting to see what the process needs to be. That we brought well, let me let me document the process to you first, and then see if there's some yes. issues because I'm not I don't I don't know that there's an issue. This is the first time I've heard of it, so okay. I don't know if there's an issue or not. Uh, and I guess you guys have access to more extensive background checks, correct? Being IHS or Cherokee Nation now, but you guys have. Uh, access to a more extensive background checks on your employees? Um, well, Human Resources does all of our background checks okay. for the tribe on employees. No. Now, no. On, on program participants, see what I'm not sure of is if HR does those or if the program, the training the program pro does them or if the, if the work site is doing those and what those are okay. but i'll i'll find that out yes and send that to you okay that's it okay we have anyone else okay i have a comment um i put to the test Redbird smith <laughs> uh health facility up there and they're great responders i'll put it that way they responded to my medical emergency uh quite quickly and took great care of me but i have a request for next month if you could give us a little synopsis of our dental program. We are still uh, having, I wouldn't say problems, but people are, it's taking them a long time to get a dental appointment down at Redbird Smith, and I refer a lot of them 
to go to Wilma P and they can get in a lot quicker or go to Muskogee. Don't look at me that way, Counselor Vision, <laughs> because I'm overcrowded <laughs> planning. But uh, I know we don't have the facilities up there, and I was just kind of wondering if we do we have a full time dentist now or a couple of them or we do. Just kind of give us an overview okay. for them. I'll do that. Appreciate it. Okay. I guess that's all. Thank you. And old business, we have none pending and new business. Uh, we've got an act uh, that is sponsored by Councilor Bill John Baker, and I'm sure he'd be happy to explain it to us, and then we can discuss it. This is an act to take 5%, an additional 5% of the profits from uh, the, the enterprises or the businesses to put it into contract help. We just heard in this meeting that 2,700 Cherokees were denied contract help out of uh, the Fairmore service unit alone and that uh, when it was 5,000 plus, including the non-Cherokees, that it would, uh, that $5 million would uh, would fully cover all of those people. <clears throat> so it's less than that. But yeah. we know the need is there, and that doesn't include any of them that are in out of Hastings or whatever, but health care is one of the most important things that our citizens look to. So I want to put this in the form of a motion to, uh, to pass this act and I assume under the rules that we're living under today, uh, pass it to executive finance uh, before we can get it back to full council again. I put that in the form of a motion. Second. Council, <coughs> yes. Council Watts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have a couple of questions. First of all, could you restate the motion again? The motion is to, you've got it in front of you, but it's a an act to take 5% of the casino profits. No, just the, where is it going to, that part? Contract help. No. Is it going to ENF and then to full council? I assume that, isn't that what yeah, you... Yeah, that would be correct. What, isn't that what you laid out? Yes, please. Okay. Then, that would be appropriate. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and then, <coughs> so, um, so if I understand it right, the 5% would be dedicated to my Cherokee citizens that are now served by Claremore Indian Hospital, uh, but can't get IHS funds because they're so short because otherwise they're not covered because they're not in the Cherokee Nation contract health system so it's not going to do what you're indicating unless we designate it for District 5's Cherokees which would be great if that's what we want to do otherwise we're not serving those people that you're talking about and, and if possible I would like Melissa to explain that because I want to know what the facts are and, and what we already know about the health. If it's going to be designated to health since we're in health committee, I want to understand, you know, where are we at today with the budgets? Who are we reaching? Who are we not reaching? Uh, would it reach District 5 Cherokee Nation citizens who are covered by IHS contract health service? Or would it not if this was designated? May I yield my time to Melissa to have yes. her explain all that? Thank you. Well, our, the Cherokee Nation Contract Health Program um, is specific on what our CHESDA or delivery area uh, counties are. And you all have, have gotten a map of that. I think I gave the new council members a map of that recently too. But um, our current program um, only covers the areas that Cherokee Nation is responsible for managing the CHS program for. So in specific answer to your question about um, the District 5 or Rogers County, whatever your question was, I'm not sure, but the answer is if that in, if you live in Claremore CHS jurisdiction right now, 
the Cherokee Nation CHS program does not serve them because they're covered under the IHS CHS program. So just can I <coughs> kind of ask a question real quick? Yeah. So if, if we pass this today, that money would not go to those folks that are not covered that are spoken to in that are CEO being denied that report that are being denied. It wouldn't cover no. any of those people. No. That's a misnomer mm -hmm. then. Okay, thank you. No, because because IHS, you know, our 14 county area, Creek Nation has a piece of it. Um, Claremore IHS has a piece of it, and then Cherokee Nation has a piece of it. Our CHS program only covers our piece of it. Okay, I'm trying to use the right terminology, but but that's correct. And can you speak to a past budget, like where we're at, who we serve, who we don't serve, in our contract tell? Okay, so um, if if it's appropriate, the speaker had sent me um, three questions, and I tried to answer those, and I'll be glad to read them real fast if you so desire. Okay. One of those was, is Cherokee Nation currently funding these services today? And when I say Cherokee Nation, I'm talking about Cherokee Nation Contract Health, what we operate. And okay. I think it speaks to eyeglasses. And, and the yeah. answer to that is yes, through the appropriations process. And FY11, Contract Health Services was provided through federal funding received in our self-governance funding agreement in the amount of $16 million dollars and cancer treatments are provided from CHS federal dollars. So out of that 16 million. In addition, we received 1.9 million of general fund for contract health services and 800,000 of general fund for dentures and eyeglasses. Hearing aids are currently provided through direct services through the WW Hastings Audiology Department. Number two was, does Cherokee Nation expend all of the existing CHS funds? Yes, in FY11, we will expend all of our existing CHS funds. We approve 95 to 96% of all of the contract health service referrals. And the following are a few examples of denied referrals, which are transplants, bariatric surgeries, emergency call-ins that could have gone to one of our facilities or non-emergent. Um, or a service that can be performed in-house or not deemed medically appropriate. And that's all done through the annual appropriations and budget modification process at Cherokee Nation that you all approve. So it's that 5% that doesn't get approved, is that what you said, right? Yeah. And it's for what reasons again that they don't um, get Some of the examples are transplants, uh, bariatric surgeries. Um, What's bariatric surgeries? Um, that'd be like gastric bypass or lap banding. But and we cover that through a different program, We right? We provide lap band, yes. Okay. <clears throat> Emergency call-ins that could have gone to one of our facilities or was non-emergent. Okay? Or a service that we perform in-house or not deemed medically appropriate. Those like are the reasons that we did not. Right. So on the tra organ transplants, that's because that is a Medicare, Medicaid, like... It's usually it's covered by another source, and one transplant, including pre and post, would could take up your whole budget. I mean, it's millions and millions and millions of dollars. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Okay. Councilor Thornton is next. Yeah. <laughs> no, let, me, let me get this straight now. I'm, I'm kind of fuzzy here in my mind. Uh, we're covering right now eyeglasses. Did we carry over any funding for that? I think we're going to spend all of our funding. Spend it all. Okay. I can't, I mean, I don't have the closeout report in front of me, so. Mm -hmm. I can't verify that, but dentures is another mm -hmm. funding. Mm -hmm. We're going to expand all that. of that in FY11. Okay. Prosthesis. Pro prosthesis that. is provided through our medical emergency resource program, mm -hmm. MERP. Um, we don't get very many uh, requests for those. I think Dr. Yeah. Grimm told me we'd had like two, 
in the last fiscal year. But yes, they are provided okay. through MERP. Okay. Then that that actually wouldn't cover in on the uh, five percent that they want to raise to cover to cover all these uh, health problems, right? Now the cancer treatment you said. That's just provided through our federal funding that we get for contract health because that's a medical. That's through the $16 million that we get from IHS for contract health. And discretionary fundings have never covered hearing aids. That's correct. I provide that out of direct services. Okay, do, do we turn down people in that? Um, we, they go through our audiology department. Mm -hmm and you just make an appointment with our audiologist and you're assessed and then if you need hearing aids um, that's how it's provided through direct services in, primarily, in other words it's not provided under CHS primarily what I'm hearing is that we need additional funding for eyeglasses and dentures well the fiscal year is over it ended September 30th mm -hmm. so for FY 12 which started October 1 you approved in the annual right. appropriation cycle money for that. Do you think that will cover the year? You know, we've added funding every year for that. Um, Just about. I don't think so. Yeah, I, um, think so. I can't tell you that right now. I mean, yeah. what 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 has, what's happened in the past is usually after the audit's done at mid-year, then we look at where the funding is and then we come back for request. That's what we did last year through the budget modification process. Well, it looks mostly I mean, I can't tell you on October 1 yeah. how much money we're going to spend through next September 30th. I realize that, and I've been around a while, and I've added mm -hmm. to it. Or we, this council has added to it in the years past. Okay. Okay? Uh, but they hadn't added that much to it. But primarily, it looks like this funding this 5% to help pay for a cancer treatment or contract health in some other form? We currently provide cancer treatments through our federal dollars that we get from IHS for contract health. But we don't provide it all. We turn people We No, we do not. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, Councillor Hoskins. Oh, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, I have a question. The Back to Work program, that's a program we fund with tribal dollars. Is that correct? It is. We tend mm -hmm. to spend that's that. That's through the $1.9 million of general fund. Yes. We tend to spend that every year because I have folks I who so, yeah. are on the back. Mm -hmm. I have folks who, in my neck of the woods. I think woods, we've spent all of ours for yeah. this year. For FY11, we spent seems, all of our CHS It seems dollars. like invariably at the end of the year I have a constituent or two who are in that situation, but they're close enough to the next fiscal year and hopefully they get helped. But it seems like the demand for that is quite high. A lot of my folks go to Claremore Indian Hospital, IHS, but we fund those folks. In other words, you and George have worked out a, a system in which folks that go there who might qualify for the Back to Work program, I know because we've talked about it in committee, are able to qualify for that. They're able to access those funds. Is that correct? Previously, if they, if they go through the, the Back to Work program, sorry, if they're eligible for the Back to Work program, Okay, let me just give an example. If you go in to, uh, if you get a referral from Claremore or from whoever for some kind of um, orthopedic surgery so that you can return to work um, and you are denied through Claremore Contract Health, then you have to appeal that denial. If you are denied on the, uh, help me if I'm wrong, if you're denied on the appeal, then, um, and they qualify for the program, the criteria, then George will work with Brett and we'll try to see if we can work those through the return to work program. Right, Is so on the, on the return to work program. So denied, denied on appeal, and then eligible for return to work. Okay. So on the return to work program, we've set up a system, it seems to me, in which we've taken travel dollars, and those dollars, and go help Cherokees who have to go through Claremore IHS because that's where they live. We've got this system set up in which those dollars can find them if they need them under that program, which has some criteria. It's got to be back to work type issues. 
So it seems to me this idea that if you go get your health care through IHS and that's where your contract health goes through, that Cherokee Nation dollars just can't find them, if that's what's being suggested, then it's just not right. It's I just incorrect. I don't think incorrect. that's what I said. What, okay. I, what I'm saying is that currently we do, not, we do not operate the medical program for CHS for the Claremore jurisdictional area. Okay, and I appreciate that. And those that's another set of frustrations which this legislation can't address. But what this legislation can address, it seems to me, is that if we run short on dollars, contract health dollars, whether you live in Vanita, where you're going to be going through Claremore IHS, or you live here, where you're going to go through Cherokee Nation IHS, it seems to me that increasing dollars here can find those folks. And it doesn't matter if you if you if you have Claremore IHS or Cherokee Nation contract health, it is. So I want, I mean, if someone disagrees, um, I know I'll hear from them, but I, I think what I'm saying is accurate. That this money follows you wherever you go, whether you're Claremore or, or Cherokee Nation. And the other thing I wanted to ask about is this idea of these contract health denials, what some of them are, and talked about cosmetic surgeries. I haven't had a constituent who's called me and said I couldn't get my nose job because Claremore denied me. What I tend to get, let me, and this is a real example, what I tend to get is the same kind of call I got about two months ago. This family that lives in Veneta, their son is a high school athlete, pretty good athlete. I don't know if he'll have a future in college. He might. He won't now. He won't now because he's had a career ending knee injury. Uh, knee injury. Now, whether or not he gets to play football another down isn't my biggest concern. It's whether the guy's going to walk right again. And a procedure that he needed through Claremore IHS was denied. It was not considered a medical necessity. Now, I don't say that to make IHS necessarily the villain. They've got a finite amount of money. The Congress of the United States has fallen woefully short in funding that. So the question is, would we step up and fund that? I think we should. And I think this is an opportunity to do that. So this idea that the folks who are getting denied contract health are you know, not medical necessity, should have gone to the Claremore emergency room. If you look down at the details, if you look down at each of these cases, you'll find a whole bunch of them where you scratch your head and say, why in the world, why in the world weren't these folks helped? And the answer probably is there wasn't enough money. I think that's the biggest problem. It's not that it was a frivolous expense. It's not that they needed cosmetic surgery. It's not that they should have went to Craig General Hospital or Clam or any hospital instead went to Craig General Hospital. And I've given the example before where the guy had to decide whether to bleed out and drive to Clamor, which is what he thought would happen, or to go to Craig General Hospital. A couple blocks away, he went to Craig General Hospital. I bet you it saved his life, and he was denied. He was denied because they said he should have went to Clamor. Now, if that is a function of a lack of money for contract health, then we ought to be able to address it because we've got the money to do it. So I don't want to get bogged down in this idea that these denials are not significant. They're very significant. And I don't want to get bogged down in this idea that this legislation won't help you if your contract health area is Claremore Indian Hospital because it's just not right. Thank you, Madam Chair. Councilman Valkenstein. Ms. Gower. It's, 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 um, uh, this is kind of following up with the uh, uh, county Boston said um, how to find these these people that were denied these uh, 2,748 Cherokees um, is there some data that we can reach maybe a, a percent of the contracted areas that these Cherokees came from that were denied or the different areas uh, that they're denied um, so we could divide the five million dollars up to find these 2,700 charities that were denied. I'll defer that to George since George, those this, were his numbers. Okay. George, is it the uh, numbers you gave us earlier? Uh, is this just the, was that just the Claremore alone, the 2,700? Yes. Okay. Um, so this $5 million that is going to supplement those denials, um, is there a, is there a way that we could uh, find out where this money needs to go so we can help out these 2700? I don't know that. Well, all right, let me ask you this. Are you, the way you ask this, are you wanting to go back and help the 2700 from last year, or are we looking at going forward? 
Well, going forward, yeah. let's say let's estimate next year we have another twenty-three sure. thousand Cherokees denied. Okay, um, what areas do we need to focus on 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 putting this five million dollars into? My suggestion. First of all, let me back up. First of all, because the question had come up before, and I'm going to have to make sure that that I could even accept five million from the tribe to put into the program. See, the problem with that, the problem that arises, if I take money, if you give me five million dollars mm -hmm. <clears throat> to administer in contract health, I cannot guarantee you that that only Cherokee Nation citizens will benefit from that. Is there a sub account? Is there a sub account? Or no. Is there no. Clarification. They, we're not giving it to you. No. Okay, okay. But, <laughs> that's hypothetical. That, that, I mean, we're going down the wrong road. And that's not, that's not what this is about. Okay. Okay. Yeah, go on. <clears throat> My suggestion would be to the, the back to work program. I worked with Brett. He explained the back to work program to me. It's administered by Cherokee Nation. Um, that way it only that only Cherokee Nation citizens receive the benefit people that came through Cherokees that came through Claremore and were denied uh, on appeal I sent him their I, I sent him their information that way he could go back go through and pick those people up and see who would actually be eligible um, the only part I did was the ones that I know that uh, one of the eligibility criteria was that they had to be denied on appeal. Well, I had a list of those every week, so I would turn those over to him and just get the process started for those folks. To me, that's a simple. To me, that's a much more efficient way to do it because you control who who actually receives that money, and and you can you can be assured that they're Cherokee Nation citizens, where I can't. If we were given five million dollars. Yeah, um, I was. I heard earlier that uh, if we were to to give you guys five million to the IHS, that we couldn't track the twenty seven hundred Cherokees. Uh, Miss Miss Gower. Pardon? Uh, earlier, uh, the the twenty seven hundred Cherokees. You said that if we were to fund the five million, that you wouldn't be able. That that money would not help out the twenty seven hundred. Like, why is that? Well, I think what I said is that in our current program, currently we do not have what, um, for lack of a better term, I'm going to use a gap program, a medical gap program, mm -hmm. which is kind of what you're talking about, I think, now that I hear you um, discussing it, where Currently, we do not have a medical gap program where we fund CHS um, cases from another um, agency's jurisdiction. Okay, so currently we don't do that. Um, we have the return to work program, which is um, sometimes utilized for those purposes, but for a full CHS medical gap program we do not have one we would have to you know if that's where the money went then or the purpose it was designated for in the legislation I suppose then we would have to set up a program to do that okay we need a, a like a needs assessment of the 2700 <clears throat> for example to find out where this money needs to go to okay that's those are kids uh, th these 2700 charities that were denied we need a needs assessment of some, of some fashion on what areas and what percentages we need to, to uh, expend this $5 million. Like, are you with me? I don't understand. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not following you how you would want a, need, a needs assessment in a, con, okay. in a contract health right, situation right. because there's no way of knowing what 2,700 cases are going to come up next year? We, you know, we're, the, the the case mix is going to be different from week to week, month to month. Um, it may be 2,000 cases next year. It may be 3,500. Um, 
My they may be is, they may be cardiology centered. They may be yeah, um, rheumatology centered. They may be well, urology centered. There's no there's no. It's hard, it's hard to come up and tell you. Well, why are, why are we coming up short from funding? Twenty if funding is is the reason why we're denying twenty seven hundred people. Um, we need to find out why and where. What areas do we need to focus on on putting funding into those areas? Is it is it dentures? Is it is it is it uh, is it glasses? Is it uh, is, is it is it? Uh, we don't pay for those. It's being, oh, okay, is it knee <laughs> surgery? Like like what areas are in need and, and, and are weak? What we do? Let me, it's all of ours is medical. medical okay. Needs. Okay. Well. Now, what, let me let me give you, what we do at Claremore is we take our total budget and split it out over the year. We have roughly $192,000 a week to spend on contract health. On all the referrals, all the medical call-ins, all the ER visits, all the surgeries, all of everything, we have roughly $192,000. Uh, that sounds like a lot of money. <clears throat> we, could, um, we could actually spend close to 500000 a week if we actually wanted to, to be able to cover everything. We have things that are categorized. We categorize things in, in four categories. An IHS manual, contract health systems normally only pay for category one, referrals and cases, which is a life-threatening situation. We have so many of those in Claremore that we have subdivided category one into life-threatening and non-life-threatening. We've actually even subcategorized it again because the severity of the medical cases that are coming through, we have critical, then we have life-threatening, then we have non-life-threatening on category one. For a year, we haven't had the money to pay anything in category one that was non-life-threatening. Category one is non-life-threatening? In, in Claremore. Um, most of the time we don't even get out of the critical stage so we pay for probably a third of everything that hits that, that is classified in category one which at any other IHS facility are going to get or are going to all get paid. Do these identify uh, the denials in these categories that you're talking about? Do I do we identify them? The, the, the denials of Cherokees in these categories. I don't understand what you're in, in your your category in your in your data that you're assessing, mm -hmm. do you have a way to identify the Cherokees that were denied? Okay, only when we go back at the end. We don't the the, the, the material that comes out to our docs. Mm -hmm. I don't even think the their uh, tribal affiliation is on there. That's why I had to go back afterwards, and they hand counted. They went through and looked them all up to get me the number that. I brought back today. Order. Yeah. They're based, everything's based on medical necessity uh, and, and, and uh, acuteness. Point of information. Is he talking about only about Cherokee Nation citizens or is he talking about any federally recognized tribal citizen that comes to the 2700? I assume he's talking about all of them. No, 2700 Cherokees. Okay. 57. There's 57, 5700 total denials yeah. last year. 2,700 and some couple were, I, I, were I, I, just Cherokee citizens. We're running short of time and I've got uh, three or four more people here wanting to more comment. Um, I like a, a needs assessment. Yeah. And I, the 2,700 uh, mm -hmm. denials, mm -hmm. yeah. I like them in categories mm -hmm. and uh, of uh, however you put your, your data in your categories. Of those 2,700 denials, are you with me? I think I'm following. Like okay. reason for denial? <clears throat> uh, well, yeah, I, I like them in categories um, of what the reason was, so that I can, and probably the rest of us can get an idea of where our weaknesses is and where we need to fund. Okay, well, I can tell you right now, probably 90% of those are did not meet medical priority, is what that's going to be termed. But what that means is, that wasn't severe enough that week to be funded because they go through those 400 and some odd referrals every week. And then they rank those by the absolute most severe 
and then the next, and then the next severe, and then the next severe, until they get down to the least severe out of those 400. We go down and pay until we run out $192,000. And if your case wasn't severe enough to be up here before we ran out of money, it doesn't get paid. So you don't have any, uh, I, well, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have a process in place to track what I'm trying to get from you. There's well, we don't have, there's, there's, there's not a cookie cutter approach that I can say, well, all of these are category twos or all of them are category threes or we only deny <coughs> knee replacements or we only deny urology visits. There's nothing just cookie cutter like that. It's, it's solely based each week on how severe the case is that comes up. That's the only fair way that we can, there's such a volume, that's the only way we can do it. That's all. Okay, Councilor Langer, thanks. Madam Chairman, thank you. If I could yield my time to Mr. Baker so you can proceed his case. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the truth is, we've got, and it's part of his denial process, it, it's so bad that you could be terminal or it could be that critical, but if you're not going to die this week. I mean, it gets to, to the point, if you're going to die this week, you're prioritized. If you've got a few months, then they don't prioritize you as, as one of the top ones. The, uh, uh, you know, this council put money, as uh, uh, David Thornton said, we put money in for eyeglasses before. And somehow or another, the, the programs have been twisted around to where instead of our elders getting free eyeglasses. Some of them are paying two hundred and something dollars for the uh, uh, for their eyeglasses because they need the bifocals or they need tinning or they need this, that, or the other. Uh, we're still denying folks, and although our contract health has borders of Cherokee County, Sequoia County, Adair County. Tribal dollars do not have borders. So if the need is in Claremore, the tribe can use their dollars, just as Councilor Hoskin pointed out, that we already have managed to work out a system for the uh, uh, back to work program. They get denied at Claremore, they appeal Claremore, the Claremore sends it to, to us. Now, would it cause us to create a program that doesn't recognize the same borders? Absolutely. But we've already pretty much already plowed that ground, folks, with the back to work program. I mean, if you'll talk to your constituents all over the 14 counties, medical is number one. They want to have access to, to, to medical care. And it almost makes you cry when somebody because they live in Wagner County, they still live in the Cherokee Nation, but they live in Wagner County, and they have to go on hands and knees to the Creek Nation, and they're going to be denied. They do not serve our Cherokee citizens if they happen to live in the Cherokee Nation, but on that ma inside that magic line. And we need to have some flexibility where we can take care of our citizens no matter where they live. And I beg you to pass this on to Executive Finance so we can hit it one more lick and we can get it to full council and we can better serve our people. Thank you. I think we do need some more clarification on it. We're about to run out of time. We've got a few more counselors here that want to comment. Uh, we've pretty well muddied the waters with the different jurisdictions here. as. If you live in the wrong spot, Creek Nation probably is going to deny you. That's true. But the next person that, uh, to speak is Councilor Coates. I, this is going back a little bit to some statements that Ms. Gower was making, and I was confused about the response because I believe Councilor Hoskin asked two questions sort of in one statement, and I wasn't sure which one you were responding to. I believe the first part of the question, if I'm remembering correctly, was um, um, about uh, cancer treatments and do we uh, uh, 
do we fund cancer treatments? Have we funded all cancer treatments? And then the second part of it was something about, and people have been denied. Uh, and your response, I believe, was along the lines of, uh, uh, yes, we, yes, we do, or yes, we have, or something like that. And I wasn't clear if you were saying, yes, we have covered all cancer treatments, or yes, we have denied people. So your response is, yes, we have covered all cancer treatments, and no, we have not denied people. For, for our patients for that our are patients in our program that, are in our that jurisdiction. we currently operate. Yes. Yes. That are within our jurisdiction. Yes. And then the other clarification I wanted to get to, it goes along the lines of, of the jurisdiction and, and the 2700 uh, in the past year denied at Claremore Indian Hospital. It has been stated several times by Councillor Watts and, the, and both of you that those 27 would not have been under Cherokee Nation's CHS jurisdiction anyway. Is that correct? Under our current programs. Under our that's current correct. programs. And that if we were to shift our current programs, uh, we would be doing so in order to cover what would be 90% uh, classified as non emergencies. Is that, am I understanding correctly? And that's just an estimate. And, and that's, a, that's a pretty educated estimate, however, I would think. Okay. I can't respond to that at all. Okay. No, I think, I, I think Mr. Bellier uh, made that statement. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Watts. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think this goes back to the bigger issue of what I've been asking this body to act on and work towards for seven years is how we work with Claremore Indian Hospital and that we should be running the contract health program. Uh, within that jurisdiction in order to be effective. So under this act at this point, I've been given no legislative assurance in the actual language that either District 5 uh, constituents, including those that live in Claremore, or the ones that would be served by District 1 over in the Wagner County, Coweta kind of egg area that would be covered by Creek Nation even, would actually be served by the money we're setting aside. So until we can come to an agreement on that, I make a motion to table till next month's meeting. Second. Okay, we have a motion to uh, table and a, and a second. Uh, all in favor of table? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Aye. Aye. Okay, we'll have, have a roll call. Hannah Clare Jordan. Point of clarification, a motion. This is a motion to table, so I'm going to vote no. I guess I answered my own question. Lee Keener? Yes. Dick Lay? No. Curtis Snell? No. David Thornton? No. David Walking Stick? No. Kara Cowan Watts? Yes. Bill Anglin? Yes. Bill John Baker? No. Jack Baker? Yes. Julia Coates? Yes. Jody Fishing Hawk? No. Janelle Fulbright? No. Don Garvin? Yes. Chuck Hoskin Jr. No. Okay. Thank you. We have six yes and nine no. Call for the question. Questions. All in favor of passing this, as uh, Councillor Baker has uh, provided it here for us, let it be known by saying aye. Point, point of point clarification: Is this the pass to the ENF? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yes. So we'll have further discussion. Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, and to go on to ENF to be discussed further. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 Do we have roll call? I could hardly hear them. <laughs> I think it was easy. <laughs> was there three? I think motion three. Yeah. Pass <laughs> the ENF. I think we do need further uh, clarification and further discussion on it because it's a very complicated subject. So 
we'll rehash it later in the next meeting. Okay. Do you have any announcements? Yes. Yeah. I'm just going to make it known to the committee that I have a sister that is now a surgeon working for W.W. Hastings Indian Hospital, and I still plan on voting in health. She's my baby sister, and I'm quite proud of her, and I'm quite protective of her. <laughs> she, she, she's 33, but she looks about 21. She's surgeon. Okay, I have one announcement here. The executive and legislative conference scheduled for 5 o'clock is canceled. Our acting principal chief. Okay. We need a motion for adjournment. Second. Okay. Hey, it's a question.